It's all, it's all, it's all connected. 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 <laughs> All right, how do you like that little opener there? I just made that about a half hour ago. <laughs> oh, boy. Anyway, thanks, uh, everybody, for tuning in. This is the It's All Connected show. I am Grim there. It's Monday, July 13, uh, 2020. Yeah. And which, we're live. We're live today. So uh, this is going to be episode three of the It's All Connected program. And the title of this show will be, Repeat After Me, Not Federal, No Reserves. I wonder what this show is going to be about. Anyway, uh, hi and howdy to all the folks that are out there listening in uh, all the various places you may be uh, listening in from, uh, which could be right here on reallibertymedia.com. Uh, you could be on the It's All Connected show page, or maybe you're over there listening on rlmradio.xyz. Possibly tuned in from realliberty.org, or maybe just direct through the Voscast. I don't know where people, how they connect up here, but hi, y'all. How y'all doing? Uh, we got a lot of great people over here in the chat, so if you're listening and you're not in the chat, head on over to realliberty.media.com, and you'll see a little button there in the upper right corner that says pop-up chat, and you can do that. You can connect right on in and say hi to the folks that are here and make comments on the show as I go through. Now, um, uh, by the way, howdy to everybody that's here. Let me see what I see talking in here. We got Vinny. We got Sock Puppet. We got anti and SLC Mike. We got the Master Brow, Miss Chloe, Gramzy. Uh, we got Moose Girl. And uh, oh, Moose Girl, how you doing? Uh, I haven't talked to you much today. Christine. Hey, Christine. Good to have you here with us. Is uh, Frieden out there? Hey, Frieden. Um <laughs> He don't come into the chat, but that's all right. He, I, 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 I know he's out there. Frumpy, uh, uh, Kate, Kate, you listening in? Tuned in? Yeah, we got all kinds of people. There's all there's a big old crowd, big old crowd. So come on over and jump on in. So uh, anyway, today, uh, the uh, as as I said, the name of this this particular episode is "Repeat After Me." Not federal, no reserves. Now, when I when I when I uh, <laughs> started to set up this show uh, a few days ago. Um, I just I just put in some some bullet point things that I wanted to cover. The first one was the Federal Reserve. I, I, it's tough deciding how far back I should go on this because I could have gone back further on that. But I no, I said all right. So I, I put down Federal Reserve, the Great Depression, JFK, Gulf of Tonkin. End of the Gold Standard, 9-11, Iraq WMDs, 2008 Recession, and Corona. And, and I was going to go through, that was my plan originally, to go through and, and connect all these, these dots together. So I started researching the Federal Reserve, the creation of the Federal Reserve, the pur purpose of the Federal Reserve, the people behind the Federal Reserve, and what the Federal Reserve means to you and me and well, I never escaped that little vortex. It, uh, I started going into it, and every every little thing I looked at brought me to another place, and it brought me to another place, and it just it kept on going on and on and on. And and as y'all, uh, yeah, I did, I did. Hi, Fred. Uh, uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah, it was it was crazy because and, and my my brain started swelling or something it felt you know like something was going on like that I, i'm not really sure uh but <laughs> either way uh that, that's that's where i wound up so i i figure the rest of these topics maybe i'll do one a week uh because i'm looking at them and i'm thinking you know the the each one of these could lead down a very deep dark rabbit hole and um I, I don't know. I, in, anyway, <laughs> well, let me give you the the first little bit. Uh, one, one of the things I got to on, on the website truthcontrol.com, dot uh, com, and what they call the Federal Reserve Guide. Here you go. Here you go. 
The Federal Reserve is not American. The Federal Reserve has no reserves, and it is not a bank. It is controlled by some of the richest and politically influential families in the world. It has the power to create money out of thin air, like magic. Institutions like the Federal Reserve have been staunchly opposed by designers of the Constitution and by presidents such as George Washington and Thomas Jefferson. Uh, this is written by a guy, uh, Robert Kiyo, Kiyo, Kiyosaki, uh, <laughs> from Conspiracy of the Rich. Um, so, I, <laughs> so I came across this site. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Uh, and well, they they talk about it here in in ways that are sometimes opposing ways, uh, because as as you said in that opening bit there that I shared with you, it's not a bank. But this here says the Federal Reserve or Fed is a privately owned central bank that controls the money supply of the United States. All the dollars we have in existence today were created by the Federal Reserve. In fact, if you look at any piece of currency, paper currency anyway, uh, you're not going to find this on coins, but uh, if you look at any piece of currency, you will see that it says Federal Reserve Note on it. Now, a note is a debt. It's an it's a, it's a indication of debt uh, in this usage. Of course, there's many other usages for the word note. But in this here, it's it's an IOU basically. That that's what the uh, Federal Reserve note is. Um, so there's that. There's that. Uh, it says it's privately owned. Uh, it's for Fed is a for-profit business that is owned by European and American banking families. These families loan money to the government of the United States and make money off of the interest. All right, they say I'm, they say I'm cutting in and out here. All right. Uh, well, I don't know what to tell you. I was having this problem yesterday, and uh, and it, it was not helping me. Um, I, I can let me let me, let me uh, go ahead and stop this for a second and try something. Oh no, Sock Papa says I'm fine. So if I'm fine in one place, I should be fine everywhere. All right, so I'm not going to stop it. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> it says it's publicly subsidized. The Fed encourages banks to take huge risks because they know that any losses they might incur are picked up by American taxpayers. <laughs> Thank you so much for that, too, by the way. Uh, it makes money through the IRS. Now, the IRS is something else to cover, but... Uh, I'm not really getting too deep into the IRS today, although, uh, oh. all right, all right, the connection dropped, so um, now I have to wait, so uh, let, let me let me just pause my recording for a minute here. All right, so we're back reconnected, and hopefully we'll stay that way. I don't know. Um, I'm not having any fun with Comcast these days. <laughs> All right, so the Federal Reserve makes money through the IRS. When you send money to the IRS, or they just take it from you one way or the other, uh, they take that money and turn it over to the Treasury, who in turn pays interest on bonds to the Fed. Short story, your taxes are paid to the Fed. Uh, it makes poor people poorer. Makes poor people poorer. Uh, through inflation, the Fed makes people poorer and makes the owners richer. Because the Fed, of the Fed, common items like food and gas become more expensive. Yes, they create more money, the money supply increases, the value of every dollar goes down. They lend money out of thin air. The Fed doesn't just print money, or doesn't just print money out of thin air, it loans it out of thin air. All the money we currently have in circulation is a loan from the Fed to you with interest. Uh, it indebts us in the future. The Fed spends wealth that we have now and then flips us the bill years into the future. By doing this, 
They are making us poorer and poorer in the future. <laughs> That's right. Whatever you got now, however have rich you think you are now, you'll be poorer in the future. Uh, yeah. All right. So it operates in secrecy. The Fed has no government oversight and operates behind closed doors. The Federal Reserve has never been audited. And anytime they bring up auditing the Fed, people freak out. They freak out big time. Uh, it gives monies, money to banks for free. Banks are legally able to lend money that they don't have. The Fed allows the banks to create loans for people with money that's non-existent. And it creates booms and busts. And we're currently going through the biggest bust ever. Yeah. All right. It creates, uh, by controlling the interest rates and the money supply, uh, more now by the money supply than the interest rates, being as the interest rates are nil at this point, the Fed is able to create booms and busts in the economy. The Federal Reserve is not American. Not American. Has no reserves. And it's not a bank. Peter Schiff uh, chimes in on this here. And the question is, why do we have it? Why do we have it? Well, it's a... Damn it. Okay. So why do we have the Federal Reserve? Uh, there are two answers as to why we have the Fed. Uh, this is a, the general mainstream answer. Then there's the real hidden answer. Uh, and the real main, the mainstream answer comes from uh, Peter Schiff here. Uh, the Fed, as the Federal Reserve is known, was originally given the mission of establ establishing an elastic money supply, like a rubber band. The idea would be that the Fed could expand or contract the amount of money in circulation to correspond with economic activity. It was thought that such movements could hold prices steady through good times and bad. Uh, yeah, good times, bad times. You know I've had my share. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Even if such a mission were a good idea to begin with, it's easy to see that the Fed has utterly failed in accomplishing it. Over the past 100 years, the dollar has lost more a good bit more, than 95% of its value. So much for price stability. Uh, the truth is that the Fed now exists for the sole purpose of providing the inflation necessary to allow the government to spend more than it collects in taxes. Way more. Way, way more. Um, <laughs> all right. And if you notice, some of the other topics that I had lined up for this here... Uh, uh, or have planned on, uh, will fall right in line uh, with that, such as the Great Depression, the JFK, the end of the gold standard, the 2008 recession. All of those, all of those will uh, will fall right in line with uh, what we've got going on here. Uh, so, ah, uh, all right. Then I came to another site here. Uh, which a, a lot of these kind of overlap and crisscross and tell you some of the same information, although some in a slightly different way. Um, yeah, yeah. All right, so this is on uh, factsarefacts.com. And whether you believe facts are facts or not is, is really, a, uh, that's something to hold on to for yourself. <laughs> the Federal Reserve is privately owned, privately owned, and not by anybody in the United States, by the way. Uh, the, the, Federal Reserve, the Federal Reserve Bank is a private company. Article 1, Section 8 of the Constitution. For you constitutionalists out there, constitutionalists, uh, so, so, Article 1, Section 8 of the Constitution states that Congress shall have the power to coin, create money, and regulate the value thereof. Today, however, the Fed, which is a privately owned company, controls and profits by printing money through the Treasury and regulating its value. The Fed began with approximately 300 people or banks 
that became owners, stockholders, purchasing a stock at $100 per share, the stock which is not publicly traded, by the way, um, in the Federal Reserve Banking System. They make up an international banking cartel of wealth beyond comparison. The Fed banking system collects billions of dollars, trillions, I guess at this point, in interest annually and distributes the profits to its shareholders. Again, private company, uh, not publicly traded. You cannot be one of the shareholders, even if you could possibly afford it. The Congress illegally gave the Fed the right to print money through the Treasury at zero interest to the Fed. The Fed creates the money from nothing and loans it back to us through banks and charges interest on our currency. The Fed also buys government debt with money printed on a printing press and charges you, U.S. taxpayers, interest. Many congressmen and presidents say that this is fraud. Well, it's obviously fraud. The, the thing here is then... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to read. I, I see I see a comment here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Now, if all the content is there and we're experiencing cutouts, then it's not grim t to them server. It's the, it's the server to us. Uh, or it's m me to their server, I guess. I, I don't know. Whichever, uh, it, it'll 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 all be there uh, in the uh, in the podcast. But um, I have been uh, when it disconnects fully disconnects. I've been pausing the recording so I, I get it all on, the, or try and get it to you as live as possible. <laughs> so who actually owns the Federal Reserve central banks? The ownership of the twelve central banks are a very well kept secret. But that has been revealed. The Rothschilds Bank of London, the War Bag Bank of Hamburg, Rothschilds Bank of Berlin, uh, Lehman Brothers of New York, Lazard Brothers of Paris, Kuhn Loeb Bank of New York, Israel Moses Seif Banks of Italy, Goldman Sachs of New York, Warburg Bank of Amsterdam, Chase, Chase Manhattan uh, Bank of uh, New York. And there's a reference to where that comes from. The bankers are connected to the London, London banking houses, which ultimately control the Fed. The London banking houses ultimately control the Fed. When England lost the Revolutionary War with America, or so they say, our forefathers were fighting for their own government. They planned to control us by controlling our banking system, the printing of money, and, the, and, and our debt. The, the individuals listed uh, here own the banks, which in turn share the Fed, shares in the Fed. The banks listed below have significant control over the New York Fed District, which controls the other 11 Fed districts. That's right, New York's in control. Uh, uh, these banks are also partly foreign-owned. So those would be the First National Bank of New York, James Stillman National City Bank of New York, some woman named Mary W. Harnman, the National Bank of Commerce in New York, A.D. Juilliard, Hanover National Bank, Jacob Schiff, uh, Chase National Bank, Thomas Ryan, Paul Warburg, William Rockefeller, Levi Morton, M.T. Pine, George Baker, Percy Pine, Mrs. G.F. St. George, J.W. Sterling, Catherine St. George, H.P. Davidson, J.P. Morgan, Edith Brever, T. Baker. Oh, I disconnected again. Sorry, guys. I didn't even notice. All right. How did it happen? After previous attempts to push the Federal Reserve Act through Congress, a group of bankers funded and staffed Woodrow Wilson's campaign for president. A group of bankers funded and staffed Woodrow Wilson's campaign for president. He committed to sign the, uh, to sign this act. In 1913, Senator Nelson Aldrich, maternal grandfather to the Rockefellers, pushed the Federal Reserve Act through Congress just before Christmas when much of the Congress was on vacation. When elected, Wilson passed the Fed. Later, Wilson remorsefully replied, referring to the Fed, I have unwittingly ruined my country. 
I don't know how unwittingly it was. He was he was financed by these people to get into the, the presidency. He got into the presidency. They gave him a document to sign, and he signed it. That sounds like it was very wittingly, not unwittingly at all. So now the banks that financially back sim sympathetic candidates, not surprisingly, most of these candidates are elected. <laughs> the bankers employ members of the Congress on weekends uh, with lucrative salaries. Additionally, the Fed started buying up the media in the 1930s, which is why you see that the media pretty much echoes everything the government wants it to echo and hushes down everything they, they want it to hush down, and now owns significantly, uh, owns or significantly influences most of, the, most of it. Uh, Presidents Lincoln, Jackson, and Kennedy tried to stop the family of bankers by printing U.S. dollars, charging the taxpayers' interest. Now, I was looking through some other sites there uh, that was trying to debunk a meme saying that Lincoln and Kennedy tried to stop the Federal Reserve. Well, of course, Lincoln didn't try to stop the Federal Reserve, not as we know it today, because there was no Federal Reserve back when he was president. So their debunking efforts uh, failed to recognize the fact that these families still was trying to control the United States through the capital, through the money. There is a link that you can look at over on reallibertymedia.com, uh, and it's the Banker's Manifesto. I should have brought that up. Why don't I, why don't I bring up the Banker's Manifesto over here on Real Liberty Media and, and share it with you? Because, you know, it, it's, it's not a whole lot to it, but, uh, but, but, but I, I, think, I, think it's, I think it's fairly important. Uh, it's the Banker's Manifesto of 1892. And um, so... This, of course, also was after 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 Lincoln, but it, it, it applied long before then. So the Banker's Manifesto of 1892, revealed by U.S. Congressman Charles A. Lindbergh Sr. from Minnesota before the U.S. Congress, right there in front of the whole Congress, uh, sometime during his term of office between 1907 and 1917, trying to warn you people. What was going on? So it says, we, the bankers, must proceed with caution on every move made for the lower order of people. That would be you. You, we, are the lower order of people. <coughs> One second. The lower order of people are already showing signs of restless commotion. Prudence, therefore, uh, will, will therefore show a policy of apparently yielding to the popular will until our plans are so far consummated that we can declare our designs without fear of any organized resistance. The Farmers' Allegiance and the Knights of Labor organizations in the United States should be carefully watched by our trusted men. And we must take immediate steps to control these organizations in our interest or disrupt them. Uh, at the coming Omaha Convention, to be held July 4, 1892, our men must attend and direct its movement, or else there will be set on foot such antagonism to our designs as we may require force to overcome. This, at present... Uh, time would be premature. We are not yet ready for such a crisis. Capital must protect itself in every possible manner through combination, conspiracy, and legislation. The courts must be called to aid our to our aid. Debts must be collected. Bonds and mortgages foreclosed as rapidly as possible. That's what's happening now, today. Uh, when through the process of law... The common people, you, have lost their homes. They will be more tractable and easily governed through the influence of the strong arm of government applied to a central power of imperial wealth under the control of leading financiers. Uh, people without homes will not quarrel with their leaders. 
History repeats itself in regular cycles. This truth is well known among our principal men, who are engaged in forming an imperialism of the world. While they are doing this, the people must be kept in a state of political antagonism. The question of tariff reform must be urged through the organization known as the Democratic Party. Got that? <laughs> and the question of protection with the reciprocity, reciprocity must be forced to view through the Republican Party. They set it up right then. Two-party system, Democrat, Republican. The Democrats were going to uh, urge <laughs> the question of tariff reform. Oh, boy. And uh, the, anyway, so by thus dividing voters, we can get them to expand their energies in fighting over the questions of no importance to us except as teachers to the common herd. Thus, by discreet action, we can secure all that has been so generously planned out and successfully accomplished. Got that? They set this all up. It was the plan. It was how they designed it. So, um, <laughs> here, let me give you all a link to that there in the chat, because um, it's important to read. Uh, anyway, so where was I before I got to that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm watching my connection fall in and out, and uh, it's just fun. Okay. This one's important. I, I, as I said, I'm not going to get too deep in, in, into the uh, IRS, but um, uh, there, were, there was a uh, – and I covered that one, right? Yeah, I covered that one. Okay, uh, I, into the IRS, but let me just say this about that, I guess, because it, United States – <laughs> United States government attorneys deny that the Internal Revenue Service is an agency of the United States government. United States govern, uh, government attorneys say, no, the IRS is not an agency of the U.S. government. They have images here in this post. Uh, it says the following images are scanned copies of pleadings certified by NARA, wherein the United States Attorney and the United States Department of Justice, Justice Trial Attorney Tax Division deny that the IRS is an agency of the U.S. government, specifically page two of the pleadings, item number four. Uh, the allegation uh, by Diversified Metal Products Incorporated plaintiff for item number four reads as follows. Defendant, Eternal and Internal Re Revenue Service, IRS, is an agency of the United States government which has presented to plaintiff a lien against monies which defendant Steve Morgan, or presumably defendant uh, T. Bow Company, trusts for him may be entitled. Uh, and, and it was a big old court case that happened, uh, I'm not even sure what year this was, uh, 2000, April 6, 2000. Um, Item four, uh, the, uh, the, the government denies that the Internal Revenue Service is an agency of the U.S. government, but admits that the United States of America would be a proper party to this action. It admits that the IRS has served notice of levy on the plaintiff for funds owed to the defendant, Steve Morgan. It's a big, long document that uh, that I, I'm not going to get into here. However, and I don't think it's in this. It's not in this post. It's in another one. Um, but but there's plenty of articles out there on this particular information. Um, uh, there you go. You don't have to even do the PDF if you don't want. But yeah, that, that's a good one. Okay. <laughs> Oh, here it is. Um, <laughs> this here is uh, on John Henry Hill. That WordPress. dot com. Uh, M D. John Henry Hill. M D. Uh, and it's titled U S Attorney's Affidavits. I R S is not a U S government agency. Per affidavit. <laughs> 
So the real truth of the matter is, as you know and I know, that a financial element in large centers has owned the government of the U.S. since the days of Andrew Jackson. That was a quote from Franklin D. Roosevelt uh, back in 1933, uh, writing to a major Mondo propagandist, Colonel E. Mandel House. If you're not familiar with uh, Colonel House, you may want to look him up. And no, he's not Dr. House of that stupid TV show. <laughs> anyway, they got also got scanned images of the documents here. All these links will be in will be in the blog after the show. But uh, just bear in mind uh, that that this that this is the case that the the Federal Reserve is not a U.S. agency. The IRS, which is basically the bill collection arm of 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 the Federal Reserve, is not a U.S. agency. Uh, and and they admit it freely and openly when pressed in court. Thanks, Chloe, for the link to, to House there. Um, <laughs> super, super propagandist going on, man. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I'm not, uh, I, all right. Um, <laughs> I'll just give you a little bit of this one here. Cause the, see, the thing I'm trying to get to here, is the connections between everything that's happened since then. And I looked over there on the YouTube today, and I, I didn't see it. But I imagine it's still up there somewhere. And there used to be a, uh, a video up there, which I think was a micro, micro viral video. And, and the title of the video was, All Wars Are Bankers' Wars, which is true. And, and if you watch that video, I think it's 30 minutes or an hour, I forget which, um, it's it's it, it, okay. So um, uh, there there there's there's the link. Uh, 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 Rob Works posted it there today. Oh look, I'm not, I'm not even connected to do uh, that anymore. That's cool. I'm not connected to anything. I try and do a show. I stay connected fine all day long, and I come on here to do a show, and my connections just fall off, and I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> all right. Anyway, continuing on. Oh, this is horrible. This is a horrible way to do a radio show. Where you try to do radio and you can't even stay connected to the damn internet. Uh, I'm telling you, man, it's, it's this is just wrong and horrible, and I hate it. <laughs> but it is what it is. And so the recording is still going on locally here. And so the recording will be uploaded, and you'll be able to listen to it uninterrupted up there on the interwebs. Sorry. <laughs> Oh, it's all right, guys. All right, so this is posted on PatrickHerbert.org uh, back in uh, about a year ago. Uh, and and it's just called uh, the Federal Reserve. He just titled it the Federal Reserve. And he's got a picture of that octopus uh, meme that you've seen showing the reserve at the center of uh, all the various groups, all the various controlling elitist groups, uh, which... Showing you what? It's all connected. Yeah, so here it is. I, 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 this first top part is just a quote, but I'm going to give it to you. It says, we have, in this country, one of the most corrupt institutions the world has ever known. I refer to the Federal Reserve Board and the Federal Reserve Banks. Some people think the Federal Reserve Banks are U.S. government institutions. They are not government institutions. They are private credit monopolies. Domestic swindlers, rich and predatory money lenders, which prey upon people of the United States for the benefit of themselves and their foreign customers. The Federal Reserve Banks are agents of foreign central banks. The truth is the Federal Reserve Bank or board has usurped the government of the United States by arrogant credit monopoly, which operates the Federal Reserve Board. That was Congress Lewis T. McFadden, chairman of the House Banking and Currency Committee. He did a speech on the floor of the House of Representatives, June 10th, 1932. The, the YT content I spoke of, I think that's the one that Rob posted there, uh, All Wars or Bankers' Wars. Uh, and I was going to point that out uh, from the fact that as soon as the Federal Reserve came into effect, we had World War One. 
Then we had the we had the uh, the uh, World War II and uh, and the uh, and the the Depression. Uh, <laughs> So, so all of these things have happened uh, since the creation of the Federal Reserve, and because of that, um, like I said, just just drawing just drawing the connections as best as I possibly can. All right, um, let me give you another little quote here from Barry Goldwater. You all remember Barry Goldwater, I hope. Uh, if you don't, look him up too. Most Americans have no real understanding of the operation of the international money lenders. The accounts of the Federal Reserve System have never been audited, and still to this day they've never been audited. It operates outside the control of Congress and manipulates the credit of the U.S. of A. <sighs> it goes on and on. And there's quotes, and there's, and there's chapters, parts of the Constitution. Uh, constitutional laws, uh, Article 1, Section 10 of the Constitution, no state shall uh, make anything but gold and silver coin a tender in payment of debts. And as you might have uh, remembered from the top of the show, one of the things I plan on covering here in future coming weeks uh, will be the end of the, the, the gold standard, uh, which is a multi-layered thing as well. Uh, but finally and fully came to being under the, the hand, the guided, well-guided hand, of Richard Nixon. So, <laughs> I wish I could just talk to you guys uninterrupted so I could get some real feedback and such, but uh, uh, I'm, just, I'm just going through uh, some of this stuff here. Because because it's all it's all just crazy. The Federal Reserve has more power than all three branches of the United States federal government and all fifty states combined. So you take all them morons in D.C., all the morons in your state that say they're running the states, put them all together, all the power they possibly have, and the Federal Reserve has more. Now, you may recall at the onset of this phony. Corona Bologna, um, the Federal Reserve pumped out trillions of dollars to do what? They said to, to save you, to help the economy. But they didn't help the economy. They fun, full, uh, filled their banks back up with more fake money. And in order to appease you a little bit, they tossed you a few dollars. Oh, here's $1,200. You you got your twelve hundred dollars. <laughs> now shut up, you slaves. Okay, so that's what they did, and they, and they did it uh, without any approval, no, without any necessary approval. Although they got some approval, um, kind of after the fact. <laughs> Oh, boy. It says here, for example, the bank can create a digital loan for a value, a value, whatever that means, uh, of $100 while only needing $10 in physical money to justify the digital loan. It was that way for, at some point, but I don't think it's even, it's, it's nowhere close to that now. Um, they, they, I don't think they have any physical money to back it now. It's it's all It's all digital. Anyway, the receipt of the loan, however, has to repay the loan in actual physical assets plus interest or risk losing the asset attached to that particular loan. For example, you buy a car or a house or whatever, the bank gives you out a loan, and you got to pay it back with uh, their Federal Reserve debt notes, or you will lose your house or your car, whatever you took the money out for, your business, uh, those type of things. Uh, so there's that. Um, <laughs> uh, one of the questions uh, we, we, they, you, as citizens of the U.S. of A., which I don't think I got that covered here, but there, there's a deal. There's a deal. When, when, when you declare yourself a citizen, um, and I'll, I'll put a link into, into the blog, but there, if you declare yourself as a citizen, you are no longer a human being. You're no longer a human being at the point 
you are declared or declare yourself a U.S. citizen. At that point, you become a corporation. And, and a corporation is not a human being. <laughs> it's a little, it's a little tricky, their wording, as it always is, uh, but, but that, that's part of the system. So, uh, one of the questions we as citizens of the U.S. must ask ourselves is, why, in a system of government created with checks and balances in place to govern for the good of the people, does a central bank exist which is not part of the system of government? Yet, all elected officials in the House of Congress and the executive sit idly by without the fortitude nor courage to right this egregious violation to how the Constitution of the United States was written by its founding fathers. Because they're all bought and paid for. That's why. That's why. History records that the money changers have used every form of abuse, intrigue, deceit, and violent means possible to maintain their control over governments by controlling money and its issuance. That's a, that's a quote from James Madison. This act establishes the most gigantic trust on earth. When the president signs this act, the invisible government, by the money power, proven to exist by the money trust investigation, will be legalized. The new law will create inflation whenever the trust wants inflation. Let me read that little bit again. The new law will create inflation whenever the trust wants inflation. The trust, the Federal Reserve, the global banker, banksters. From now on, depressions will be scientifically created. Scientifically created. Like the one you're going through today. Scientifically created depression. Brought on by a, quote, virus, unquote, that was, a, that was a quote there, too, by uh, Congressman Charles Lindbergh on the creation of the Federal Reserve back in 1913. He knew. Everybody knew. Well, a anybody with eyes to see at that point knew. Uh, they absolutely freaking knew that this is what it was going to be. After Wilson signed that act into law, the invisible government by the money power proven to exist by the money trust investigation, will be legalized. And so all of the depressions, recessions, whatever, since that point in time, all the wars were scientifically created by the, by the government, by the Fed, I mean, not by the government, by the Federal Reserve System. So every time uh, you, you look at World War One, World War Two, the Great Depression, uh, all of the Vietnam War, uh, the end of the gold standard, all of these things all tie back in. They're all part of the global group, uh, which I read a bunch of names from earlier, uh, as to who these people are and, and how that came to be. Now, you may say, well, what can we do about it? Uh, the, Fed, the, the Federal Reserve Act what well, was was ratified by by the uh, I think it was it eighty percent three three quarters three fourths of the states had to uh, ratify the sixteenth amendment to the Constitution uh, to 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 uh, allow the Federal Reserve Act to go in in but it never happened now this site's a little loony a, a slightly a bit loony. <laughs> in some ways, but it's still got some good information on it. And they talk about the 16th Amendment never being ratified. Um, and, <laughs> oh, this is the one. Here, here, here it is. Uh, this is the one I was talking to you about earlier. It says, if you are a citizen of the United States, you are, by this reconstruction, no longer a human being on the land, but a corporation. According to the United States Supreme Court, a designation and classification that was intended to apply to ships and vessels in a commercial capacity. 
This is why all gun crimes, along with many others, are commercial offenses of or revenue crimes. Revenue crimes. The IRS, well, let me let's see if I can hang on to that for a second here, uh, until I actually get reconnected here, because I think I want these people to at least get that one little tidbit of it. So here it is. Uh, all, all crimes, state or federal, are consi considered commercial crimes. All crimes, state or federal, are considered commercial crimes. The IRS is an agency of the IMF. Now, again, that goes back to that other thing I was reading, diversified metal products versus the IRS, where the United States government attorneys admit that the IRS is not an agency of the United States government. <laughs> as far as I know, at this point in time, uh, there, there are a couple places where the IRS as, is registered. Neither one of them is in the United States. One's in the Philippines, and uh, I forget where the other one's at. But the IRS is actually located in two separate locations, not the United States. Sure, they have offices here all over the place. They need them because they need to collect, steal your money from you. Uh, Puerto Rico, okay. Yeah, that's the, th thank you, Rob, for that. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, like I said, there's a lot of crazy stuff in this particular on this particular website, uh, they go into stuff like it says, uh, no Christian can be a citizen of the United States. I don't know if that's true, but it, that's what it says here. I don't know enough about Christianity and uh, the Christian type folk to, to say that what this guy is saying is true. Like I said, he puts a lot of stuff in this article, uh, this posting that I, I, I cannot verify or uh, anything like that. But he also has a lot of good information with actual references uh, to various court cases and, and, and case law and things like that. So there you have it. The IRS is an agency of the International Monetary Fund, the IMF, located in the Philippines and Puerto Rico. So uh, thank you for that. Um, all right, I'm going to stop here. Uh, this is crazy trying to try to uh, talk to you all. And since I'm connected at this moment in time, I'm just going to go ahead and call it a day. Uh, we'll, we'll get back with some... Um, the next topic next week, uh, try and get off this IR, IRS stuff. Uh, I think I'm going to go to the Great Depression next week, but we'll see how that goes. I could change my mind throughout the week. Yeah, it was painful. No doubt about it. So um, <laughs> it'll be better on the podcast if you listen to the podcast. So anyway, thanks, everybody. Tune in tomorrow to It's a Perfect World with Flash Somebody. Uh, over there on uh, on RLM Radio, over there, right here on RLM Radio. <laughs> we'll talk to you all later. Peace.